Hi, how have you been? Uh, welcome to Curiosity the Science Show, bringing you the latest development in the field of science across the disciplines. You know, this one is November episode and it is episode number 25. 25 episodes have passed over the last one and a half years. Uh, unbelievable, isn't it? For me, it's quite unbelievable. And this is the month of uh, Diwali, Deepavali. You can see that the fireworks behind me, uh, the festival of lights, friends. Uh, my best wishes on this uh, uh, in the eve of the Diwali and uh, plus this month the November we are going to see that the science week uh, the week for science for peace it's an international celebration from the United Nations right we will come to it in a short while and what mood the world of science what are the science news from the October we will just uh, quickly go through it uh, you might have seen that the Glasgow COP26 is going on and uh, yeah, so the 76 countries have uh, pledged to cut the core. That is a good news. But unfortunately, two major countries in the world, that is India and China, did not sign. That is a miss, definitely. And also there is a methane pledge. Uh, you know, the pledge to cut down the methane. Methane is uh, one of the potent greenhouse gas. You know, so just like CO2, but not many people are talking about methane. So many countries have pledged to cut down the methane. And uh, many of the environment groups are saying that this COP26 in the Glasgow in the Scotland has been the whitest COP in the recent time. Whitest means really bad, you know, no significant development. Uh, you know, not many people have pledged. So, uh, you, you know, the, the target to dec decrease the, sea, the uh, global temperature by 1.5 degrees Celsius is kind of unachievable. You know, uh, yes, so there is actually, the, the, there is a, definitely there is a question between economics and ecology, isn't it? So if you want to concentrate on ecology, then the economics will get hampered. So there are ways out, but unfortunately, uh, the, the new world is yet to adopt to the new technologies, you know. And yes, for so the last uh, month, we have seen the Nobel Prize being declared from Stockholm in the Sweden. And unfortunately, this year has been all male Nobel, not a single female. That is pity, isn't it? So physics Nobel has been, I will just go through it uh, uh, to refresh your memories, right? The physics Nobel has been awarded to a Japanese American scientist, uh, Tsukyo Manabe, then uh, German scientist, uh, Klaus Hasselmann, uh, for their work on climate modeling. They are basically, they are mathematic modelers. They predicted how the, the climate change is going to happen, you know. And uh, the Italian physicist, uh, Giorgio Parisi. So he is the, uh, you know, a key scientist behind chaos theory, you know. So how, uh, you know, the disorderedness, uh, disorderly matter and force, energy, drives the universe, the chaos. You know, so that's very complicated mathematical concept, but he laid foundations to that theory. For the chemistry, it is uh, the German Benjamin List and the Scottish chemist David W.C. Macmillan for asymmetric organocatalysis. So basically, this is a synthetic uh, chemistry, you know, that they are synthesizing the molecule. And uh, you sh before their discovery that the organic molecule can only be synthesized in symmetric fashion. But here it is basically asymmetric uh, catalysis of the organic synthesis. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, it is going to have a huge impact across the fields, especially on for the drug, uh, you know, drug chemistry and synthetic drug uh, biology. And for physiology and medicine, Nobel, it's pity, isn't it? They, they have basic physics and basic chemistry, but there is no basic biology in Nobel. So the fields like taxonomy is completely, uh, you know, ignored. Even evolutionary biology is ignored. You know, even Darwin wouldn't have got Nobel Prize because there is no field for basic biology, you know, that's, that's really a pity. So we do have Nobel for physiology or medicine, which is quite applied only for you know, the, the human physiology, isn't it? And also the, the, the physiology of uh, animals, you know? So both the scientists are from the United Nations. Uh, that is David Julius and Artem Patapoutian. So very interesting name, right? He, he's an immigrant worker. So Patapoutian, I don't know how to spell it. Yeah, so their discovery is about skin sensor, touch and temperature. You know, so it's very interesting that uh, they, they discovered about the receptor, the skin receptors for the temperature and touch. 
So for that similar discovery, they got the award. And for literature, uh, again, it's an immigrant uh, person, the writer. Uh, his name is, uh, you know, Abdul Razak Gurna. I've never heard for uh, Horns Lake's never heard his name before, though I, I love to read novel and, uh, you know, literature. So he is basically born in Tanzania, you know, so uh, it's in Africa. It's an African island, isn't it? Tanzania. Uh, yeah, so it's not an island, of course. It's, you know, Tanzania is uh, just near the Kenya, right? It's, a, it's one of the major countries where uh, people go there for safaris, right? And also Mount Kilimanjaro is in Tanzania, you know. Uh, Zanzibar, isn't it? So the, the capital. So he was born over there and uh, then uh, migrated to the United Kingdom, the England. And over there he started writing on colonialism and refugee. The literature concentrated on, on those things. So some of his uh, famous books include Memory of Departure, Pilgrim's Way and Doughty. So these are in my reading list in uh, Goodreads. I'll definitely check it out. So if he won the Nobel for literature, that means that I somehow it's missed out, right? So it's a, it's a hidden gem. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And for the piece, Maria Ressa, yeah, it's a, uh, she's a Filipina, but by the way, it's peace. Uh, it's not real Nobel, you know? So it is a Nobel Memorial Award in peace, global peace. So that's why it's, it's of course, there was a, a female in it. So Maria Ressa is a Filipina uh, journalist and Mitri Andreevic. Muratov, uh, he is a Russian journalist, and they got the Nobel for uh, they for the freedom of expression. The journalistic freedom of expression is very important. Both of them wrote many pieces during the authoritarian governments in their home countries. You know, so that is the reason they got the award. You know, so that that sums up everything. And also, of course, economic source, right? Swarije Banks uh, Award in Economics. So uh, all US team got this award. So US is like reigning champion, isn't it? Germany also got an UK too at right, this time. So uh, this the award the award goes to David Card uh, for labor economics. So so basically his work concentrated on questions like raising the minimum wage. Does it cause the people to lose jobs? Because unskilled very low skilled people will not be uh, you know promote i mean they won't be getting job if the jobs minimum wage is very high isn't it so he did a lot of work on those lines and joshua d anchorist and guido w imbans i don't know if am i pronouncing it right so both of these uh, you know second and third nobel laureate they worked on something called casual relationships in economics so what does that mean? Cash relationship. So uh, questions like how additional education affect the earnings. Quite related concept, you know. So you, like MSc, if you have a master's degree and if you go for a PhD, how does it affect your salary, your earnings? So that kind of uh, causal relationship is what uh, they, they looked at it. Congratulations to all the, the the Nobel Prize winners. I hope our country also produce uh, one, you know, uh, it's it's kind of a pity, isn't it? Since, uh, you know, the independence, not a single Indian have won science Nobel. Of course, we got few Indian origin scientists uh, living abroad. And also, you know, the, the peace as well as economics we got, but the, the real Nobel in the, the three subjects, that is basically chemistry, uh, you know, physics and physiology or medicine, we didn't get a single Nobel since C.V. Raman. C.V. Raman, remember, he got in uh, British history. And uh, the last month, what did I learn? Let me share what the, the new things which I learned. So, well, as you can see behind me, this is all fireworks. So, how does it work, the fireworks? So, you might uh, wonder, well, we have seen that, in we have, uh, you know, studied that in school, isn't it? So, in its simplest form, the firecrackers consist of uh, two ingredients gunpowder wrapped in the paper with a fuse as simple as that gunpowder in a paper with a fuse so what is that so gunpowder basically gunpowder has 75 percentage potassium nitrate 15 percentage charcoal or sugar you know to to help to burn sustainably and 10 percentage sulfur so this is the ingredient sulfur then charcoal and then potassium nitrate 
this is the simplest form okay so potassium nitrate sulfur and carbon they all react together to form nitrogen and carbon dioxide gases and potassium sulfide you know the, the smell after bursting the crackers isn't it so that is what so of course uh, then how about different colors so all these colors are pretty interesting uh, very interesting chemistry which i shared that in the yai young academies uh, uh, you know the facebook page you might have seen that uh, for red it is strontium salt well for orange it is calcium salt if it's yellow it is sodium salt while green it is barium uh, and blue it is by the copper salt you know if you burn the copper it's blue in color purple is by combination of copper and strontium compounds you know and silver very interesting silver crackers is because well, white hot magnesium and aluminium you know and white uh, you know some crackers are pure white so that is because of the burning metal like magnesium aluminium and titanium very exciting isn't it so it's it's uh, pretty interesting to note that many of these things are also found in uh, meteorites you know extraterrestrial meteorites uh, that is the reason why the, the tail of meteorites uh, like comets are in, in different colors you know so that is pretty exciting isn't it I also learned in October that the ancient Egyptian developed the first recorded early pregnancy test pregnancy detection test wow I, I never knew that the Egyptians they did it so it's basically the women uh, they pee uh, they, they urinate in a bag of wheat or barley and then if the bag started sprouting the, the wheat or barley started sprouting that indicated the pregnancy very interesting isn't it and the accuracy of the test is 70 percentage so that is pretty interesting since 1963 the researchers estimated the accuracy of that test and the, again another uh, interesting story from the uh, by the ancient egyptians they even had egg incubators that can hatch the egg of the chicken eggs you know so uh, thousands of eggs in two to three weeks you know it is in the first century bc friends the kind of developments is amazing isn't it so yes yeah, so that the, the techniques involved passed down orally for more than 2000 years so whatever the egyptians did it you know that technology gets passed on orally because uh, you know the uh, paper hasn't been invented yet during those days yet another thing which i learned is that in 1957 five men stood directly underneath two kiloton nuclear bomb that detonated at 18,500 feet uh, above them, you see, to demonstrate that how safe this, uh, you know, the, the nuclear test is. You see that there are so many uh, talks going on that it's quite unsafe. But, you know, if it is in a, such a distance, nothing is going to happen. You know, 18,500 feet is pretty uh, high altitude, isn't it? So they just stood be below it. And then what has happened to them? They gave on you know they even looked through the regular glasses that the explosion and uh, they they lived on till their 70s and 80s you know so they didn't die young right so that is uh, this very interesting story i have linked up everything below please check the, the show notes to access the original story of all these things okay and finally i learned in the last week uh, that uh, you know the desert sand like you know if you ever been to the thar desert of rajasthan or you know gobi desert in china or a saharan desert right so this desert sand can we use it for construction no it's virtually useless that is why you know that i that is what i heard in last week that saudi arabia the land of desert they import the sand from australia how paradoxical it is right they are importing the sand because that the you know that is too too fine too super fine uh, it doesn't actually have the coarse consistency and that is the reason that desert sand cannot be used for uh, the, the building construction very interesting right now let us quickly go through 15 uh, stories so this time it is a little bit more it is uh, uh, this is 18 stories from the science related stories from the last month scientists finds water in a, a distant an ancient galaxy the galaxy is called SPT031158. That is the name of that galaxy, very, very uh, far away. And it's very ancient galaxy, 12.88 billion light years away. The distance is 12.88 billion. So it's almost the edge of the universe, friends. They found the water. 
come on unbelievable isn't it coaxin developed by bharat biotech here in india it gets who's emergency use approval after such a long trial finally coaxin gets uh, who's approval though it didn't still don't have the cdc's approval okay antidepressant fluoxamine that is usually prescribed for obstructive convulsive disorder you know ocd that is a prescriptive drug so it's basically antidepressant slashes the risk of covid 19 death very interesting right covid 19 death so it can be used as covid 19 treatment this antidepressant very exciting so when given cash with no strings attached low and middle income parents increase their spending on children so their parental care increased if you if the government start giving them some money that is basically universal basic income scheme by right? ubi uh, the finland and other scandinavian countries are already uh, you know practicing on trial run we have covered this ubi many times in the curiosity channel so that's pretty interesting so the ubi actually leads to better parental care you know news avoidance during covid 19 pandemic is associated with better mental well-being because uh, there is a cornucopia of uh, negative news you know so if you keep on exposing to the negative news then your mental well-being is being affected you know so there is the reason news avoidance so yeah i also don't actually look at the tv or the, the you know the, the uh, facebook or whatsapp you know whatever the news full time uh, you know the media fast which i've been uh, telling i've been t telling everyone right in my, in my channel go for media for at least one day in a week I just came back from Kashmir without any media for one week. You know, it was uh, one of the best time I had in recent times, you know. Yes, a chemotherapy drug, Nucana, derived from Himalayan fungus, has 40 times greater potency for killing the cancer cells than its parent compound. So it's very interesting. I spent three weeks in Uttarakhand before going to Antarctica uh, in a place called Mana and uh, Oli near joshi mount and those areas are very uh, renowned for uh, you know the, the people who actually wander around to, to collect this caterpillar fungus uh, they call it as kida jedi you know so it's basically a fungus you know uh, that is actually the the caterpillar gets surrounded with the fungus you know so those stuff that is called of the kida jedi uh, scientifically this is known as cordyceps sinensis it's a chinese isn't it the origin is china that is sinensis so cordyceps sinensis has 40 times more potent uh, anti-cancer potential so it is already in the market now nucana is a drug very exciting news isn't it the nat nature derived uh, you know anti-cancer compound lack of sleep decreases empathy that is what the new study says so you know the feeling for other person is called empathy isn't it so if you lack a, a good night's sleep then you become less empathetic <laughs> very interesting please check out the original stories in the show notes okay then uh, not so good news for vegetarians like you and me if you are a vegetarian <laughs> non-vegetarians develop less depression compared with vegetarians it's a it's a large number study you know so yes yeah, so if you are a uh, you know if you're a vegetarian then you need to f uh, use some supplements in order to ward off the risk for developing uh, you know the depression isn't it check it out with the study over there cannabis products may help to treat the symptoms of depression improve sleep and increase the quality of life study says like cbd you know uh, uh, or uh, uh, THC, uh, C, you know, tetrahydroxycannabinol, that is the, the active moiety of the cannabis, right? Marijuana, you know, so that can aid in a uh, treatment uh, scenario for sleep deprivation, you know, very interesting, isn't it? And 87 percentage of excess lung cancer risk eliminated if the smokers quit before the age of 45. So if you are below 45 years and if you still smoke, consider quitting if you quit your chance of developing lung cancer is decreased by 87 percentage exciting you know and beware of the lung cancer lung cancer uh, you know the the survival uh, 
chance you know prognosis is extremely low you know if it gets detected you won't even live for two years friends so beware of it you know please quit smoking if you smoke another alarming study about the sperm quality of the americans though it is done in america probably it's the same thing elsewhere too that the sperm quality has been declining for the last 16 years among the u.s men that why I, we have no clue maybe it's because of the exposure to the plastics you know uh, like the endocrine disrupting chemicals that could be the reason for it you know but anyway this is the trend is very clear that the quality of the sperm is decreasing that's quite alarming COVID-19 conspiracy theories thrive on the social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, uh, you know, WhatsApp, uh, all those uh, social media platforms except one, Twitter. So the reason is simple. Twitter is like we are tweeting out to the, the world, right? It doesn't actually foster this kind of uh, echo chamber, you know. So there is nothing like a filter bubble inside the Twitter. Well, it depends like whom you are following. If you follow only to a particular ideology, then you are virtually inside one, uh, you know, one uh, filter bubble or echo chamber. But in general, Twitter is like you're tweeting like a bird to the whole world, right? So that is the reason why Twitter is less affected by uh, disinformation and misinformation, which is the good news, you know. Uh, HPV vaccine, that is basically for human papilloma virus, uh, the vaccine is cutting cases of cervical cancer by 87 percentage that is the first real world study published in the lancet finds the british journal lancet you know so yes yeah, so that is quite exciting you know oh, by the way this human papilloma virus the vaccine is being taken by a female uh, because that uh, you know that uh, while infection is pretty common in the female and yes, so of course, cervical cancer is uh, it's, it's for the female. But HPV vaccine can be taken by men too because men are silent carriers. And if the men are not uh, protected from the virus, then they can they keep on infecting other females. So it's advantageous and it's recommended that men too get this HPV vaccine. Very interesting that vaccine reduces the chance of the cancer, you know. And yeah, so... Uh, we haven't seen anything like that. That is what one researcher exclaimed from the University of Sydney when they detected this strange radio signal from the heart of Milky Way. Milky Way is our own galaxy. On the heart of Milky Way, there is a black hole. So somewhere nearing, near, nearby that, that black hole, uh, the researchers detected the strange radio wave signal. So it's pretty interesting. So, uh, you know, uh, what could be it could be a new class of a stellar object but of course conspiracy theories are quick to conclude that it's a proof of uh, alien life well we don't really have any such proof yet it could be a, a new kind of new class of stellar object you know uh, like nebulae you know or red giant whatever you know it might be an entirely new class we haven't seen anything like that that is what the professor claims contrary to widely held gender stereotypes women are not more emotional than men that is what the latest study says so we think that the women are more emotional they cry and uh, yeah the emotional outbursts are pretty common for the the female than the men but it's not you know very interesting you know so yeah that one reason why people think that is because it is connected to the hormone uh, you know and uh, uh, there is a menstrual cycle at uh, different stages of the menstrual cycle the emotion keep on changing but those are unfounded it's you know it's just uh, some random guess but this study says that it there is no uh, scientific basis of such uh, theories you know so many of these myths are there isn't it uh, for example risk uh, i mean uh, you know drinking little bit is better for health you might have heard that you know alcohol consumption moderate alcohol consumption is better for cardio cardio you know cardiovascular health or wine especially the french paradox right that is somehow that is something different that is with, with the rest of uh, uh, that is basically uh resveratrol is a uh, uh you know it's an antioxidant present in the grape wine and yeah so it's not just the uh you know the, the red wine but also the grape juice has this antioxidant you know but alcohol in moderation is better for health. That is the pre predominant myth. 
that has just been busted by the German scientists. They found that there is no evidence for longer life expectancy in people who drink in moderation. So that finding speaks against the recommendation to drink alcohol for health reasons. So there is, there, it's, it's impossible. So there is no health basis that people advise you to drink. So if you drink, please quit drinking. You know, there is yet another hoax that has been busted uh, in, in the last month. So chemicals in the shampoo and makeup, like uh, especially phthalates, you know, I've covered this phthalates and other, uh, you know, other compounds in the plastics quite often in this channel are linked to the early death. You know, that is what the study finds. So, uh, yeah, the shampoo, you can quit using shampoo altogether or switch to a regular bar soap. You know, so the contents are quite same. You know, it's just the surfactant in the shampoo too, right? And nearly 500 Meso-American monuments were revealed by LIDAR. LIDAR is like radar, it is laser assisted mapping. Many for the first time. That's very interesting story. You know, LIDAR is really getting super powerful, you know. So it's basically subterranean monuments can be revealed by this laser assisted scanning. You know, 500 friends. Very interesting, isn't it? So that's it for the, the last month's stories. And now coming to the observances, so what to look for in this month, this month of November. Fifth, that is today is Tsunami Awareness Day. Ninth is International Week of Science and Peace, one whole week of celebration of how science contributes to the world peace. Tenth is Science Day for Peace and Development. Science Day for Peace and Development. That is 10th. That's celebrated. Very important day for among the UN observances, day for science. 13th is Antibiotic Awareness Day. Antibiotics have saved uh, millions of life world over. And also, uh, misuse of the antibiotic is leading to antibiotic resistance. So it's a double-edged sword. So awareness is the key. 14th is World Diabetes Day. Very important for the people here in India, especially those uh, living in uh, uh, southern state of Kerala. I'm from Kerala. So Kerala is the epicenter of diabetes as well as the coronary artery disease all over the world. So beware of it, you know. 18th is World Philosophy Day. Philosophy is really important, right? Uh, my book is partly about philosophy. The curiosity of the book is coming up uh, in next one month. Stay tuned. 19th is World Toilet Day. Accessibility to toilet friends. Uh, almost non-existent in several of the countries you know a large I mean a majority of the citizens of those countries have no access to the toilet here in India too many of the states don't have it 20th is Children's Day World Children's Day 21st is Road Traffic Victims Awareness Day you know as well as Television Day television is a great media for Broadcasting, isn't it? The, the science related contents as well as for public education, isn't it? 25th is elimination of violence against women. Very important day. And 30th is remembrance of all victims of chemical warfare. You know, so yeah, so whenever I hear, hear this chemical warfare, I think of, uh, you know, a, a very tragic incident happened in uh, Tokyo Metro you know by Ong Shinri Kyo so that is basically a, a conspiracy theorist extreme religious group and they used sarin the poisonous gas to kill people around uh, you know they they want to uh, spread the religious dogma you know so very very dangerous right these cult groups are extremely dangerous yes so that's it for uh, this week's general observances and now coming to astronomy specific observance of course all these observances are binocular events even if you don't have any telescope you can still watch it you know and i suggest you the app is skyview app skyview is uh, uh, it's a free version is also as good as uh, the paid one and if you have a little bit more money you can get a paid version of skyview fifth is a, a good day for to watch the Uranus. Even with the low power binocular, you can watch Uranus today. You can watch Uranus. Eighth is Moon Venus conjunction. Conjunction is very nearby, you know. 
so that if you take a pick you will get both the celestial clock in the same frame tenth is moon saturn conjunction eleventh is moon jupiter conjunction so many conjunctions in this month right twelfth is northern torrid meteor shower seventeenth is leonid meteor shower nineteenth is partial lunar eclipse uh, which is visible throughout the americas japan and all those places but uh, in india it is not visible except extreme northeast like uh, uh, you know arunachal pradesh uh, i mean the eastward you know uh, nagaland and manipur some locations can see the partial eclipse you know and also on the same day that is 19th of november is beaver moon it's a full moon you know that this uh, november full moon is known as beaver moon named after the beaver the animal 21st is alpha monoceroted meteor shower very interesting name right alpha monoceroted 28th is orionic shower orionic shower you know it's the easiest you can easily detect the orion nebulae and the orion constellation so right in the center of orion is where this uh, meteor shower originates from so nearby orion again uh, it's very conspicuous constellation the orion right so yeah best wishes on watching the orion and other meteor shower and all the celestial events in this month the, the november events you know and yeah so 28th is the orionic shower right and now coming to the last section of the curiosity the opportunities are several opportunities friends check it out the link is below and um, yeah so the opportunities are for the students uh, postdoc opportunity and also for early career researchers you know uh, for example uh, asia foundation award is there for uh, you know for the students and nih award several of the nih uh, fellowship call is open now dst dad that is the german indo german uh, you know uh, collaborative right so the bilateral scheme is open now austria india bilateral program is also open now janaki amar award for the women scientists for the taxonomy is also open now dbt tata innovation award call is also open check it out please several links are there and thanks a lot for the yai uh, you know volunteers for expanding this list uh, you know your contributions are well acknowledged in this curiosity program and uh, we also have an exciting young academy so uh, facebook pro, uh, page where you can see all these science related stories uh, you know in in the real time so check it out and do contribute to it we have several moderators and if the story is exciting if the story is uh, you know uh, about about science in general you're welcome to submit it you know we will approve it so there's several exciting research stories as well as opportunities being posted in our facebook group you know and do subscribe it so all these links are in the show notes of this uh, episode so check it out the show notes section and i wish you a very productive uh, you know the month of november right and i'll see you soon in the next episode of curiosity which will be in the month of december and till then please take care of yourself and if you can take care of someone else too goodbye